In this video, we're briefly going to introduce the notion of sequences and then do a few examples. So a sequence is actually a function. So a sequence is a function whose domain, so the inputs, are the natural numbers. So a sequence is a function whose domain is the set of natural numbers. And by natural numbers we mean 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Sometimes we allow 0 to be uh, an input, so that's okay as well. So here's the notation that we tend to use in mathematics for sequences. So notation So normally for functions, we use y equals f of x. So instead of y equals f of x, where x is your input and y is your output, we use the following notation. We use a sub n equal to f of n. So your a sub n is your y, so it's your output. So a sub n is the output. It's in the range of the sequence. And n is in the input. It's in the domain of the sequence. a sub n has a name. It's called the nth term. I tend to use that uh, quite often. Some people call it the general term. That's also acceptable and correct. So it's the nth term or the general term. You could say a sub 1 is the first term of the sequence. So first term. a sub 2 is the second term of the sequence. So second term and so on. Sometimes we start with a sub 0, that could be the 0th term, etc. Let's do a simple example of evaluating a sequence, or rather writing the first few terms. So say we have a sequence that's defined by a formula, so a sub n equals 1 plus 1 over n. So in this definition, it doesn't really tell us uh, what n is, so we have to assume that we start at 1. There's no other information, so that's a good assumption. So a sub 1 basically means you replace all of the n's with 1's. So we'll get 1 plus 1 over 1, which is 1 plus 1, so it's 2. So a sub 1 equal to 2 is the first term of our sequence. Let's look at a sub 2. This would be 1 plus 1 over 2. So 1 plus 1 half is 2 halves plus 1 half, so it's 3 halves. So a sub 2 would be equal to 3 over 2. Let's do another one. a sub 3. a sub 3 would be 1 plus 1 third, which is 3 thirds plus 1 thirds, which is 4 thirds. So a sub 3 is 4 thirds. And yes, why not? Let's do another one. You say, why? Why do we keep going? You will see. Something interesting will happen here. This is 4 fourths plus 1 fourth, which is 5 fourths. So a sub 4 is 5 fourths. You see that the numbers appear to be getting closer and closer to 1. So we have 2, 3 halves, which is 1.5, 4 thirds, which is, I believe, uh, 1.33, uh, 5 fourths, which is uh, 1.25. So you see we're, we're at 2, 1.5, 1.33, 1 1.25, etc. So the further you go, the closer you get to 1. So in this case, in this case, we say the sequence a sub n, and we tend to write it in brackets when we're just talking about it by itself. We tend to put brackets around it. We say a sub n converges to 1. 
So what does this mean? It means that the terms of the sequence get closer and closer to 1 as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And the way we write that formally in calculus is we write the limit sign. We basically take the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n. And we see that that limit is equal to 1. So if the sequence um, doesn't converge, we say it diverges. So those, are the, those are the two possibilities. So if it's equal to a number, if you take the limit of this and it's equal to a number, we say it converges. If it's not equal to a number, we say it, it diverges. You can also just straight up look at this and take a calculus viewpoint. If you take the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n, you can see that as n gets really big, well, 1 over n gets really small. So this is just 1 plus 0, which is equal to 1. So the sequence converges to 1. Let's look at another example. Uh, how about this one? We have an infinite sum. Not infinite sum, sorry. <laughs> infinite sequence. And I'm writing it like this, just on purpose, just to show you. This is other notation that sometimes people use for sequences. Here it's indicated that uh, it starts at 1. So let's list the first few terms. The first term is 1 third. The next term is 1 over 3 squared. The next term is 1 over 3 cubed. The next term is 1 over 3 to the fourth, etc. So you see in this case that the terms get closer and closer to 0. So if you were to take the limit at n go as n goes to infinity of 1 over 3 to the n, you would get 0. So this would be called the limit of the sequence. And we would say that the sequence converges to 0. Let's do another example. Say we have the sequence a sub n equal to negative 1 to the n. And again, we're not told uh, in this definition where we're starting, so we're just going to assume it starts at 1. So a sub 1, well, is negative 1 to the 1, so it's going to be negative 1 a sub 2 will be negative 1 squared. That's just going to be 1. a sub 3 will be negative 1 cubed. That's going to be negative 1. a sub 4 is negative 1 to the fourth, which is 1. It appears we have a pattern. It appears that a sub n can be written as a piecewise function. So if n is even, we can say it's 1. So this is if n is even, right? Because if we have a 2 or a 4 or a 6 or a 10 or a 20 or a 2012, any even power of negative 1 is going to be 1. And it's negative 1 if n is odd. So if you try to take the limit here of a sub n, well, you wouldn't be able to come up with an answer because... It's either 1 or negative 1. It oscillates. It never approaches anything in particular. If you were to graph it, it would just look like this. You know, 1 uh, it would look something like this. Dot, 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 dot. And it just goes on forever, and it doesn't get close to anything because it's always 1 or negative 1. So this limit does not exist. So in this case, we would say that the sequence diverges. So the sequence diverges. So again, a sequence will converge if when you take the limit, you get an answer. It will diverge if you don't get an answer. Um, I think that's good for now. In the videos that follow, uh, I'm going to show you more strategies for computing limits of sequences. And yeah, you'll be able to see more examples of how to compute limits. Oh, and if you're wondering, uh, what are sequences for? Well, we use them in calculus to study series, but they are used for other things. Uh, you know, Fibonacci used them to study, uh, you know, the reproduction of rabbits. Um, they come up in nature. Um, they're used to solve counting problems. So sequences are a big deal in mathematics. I hope this video has been helpful.